In this life, we all tend to overload on automation. One, two, three. Hey, everybody! What's up? It's Ed, Joy, and Quinn coming to you loud from Maui! Yeah, we went dark for a little while. It's been a while, like a couple of weeks, I think, yeah, Quinn? But we had a lot of action, a lot of stuff happening. Um, I think we went dark right before Halloween. Scary Halloween. Did you guys have a good Halloween out there? Yeah, I know we're, we're, we're what, two weeks behind? <laughs> but um, our Halloween went great. It was a nice, calm evening, beautiful night. Normally, it's rainy. For the past couple of years, I think it was raining, yeah? But not this time. This time, it was beautiful. Um, a, a good night. It was a Wednesday, so you really can't party. And then the following week, um, uh, uh, Quinn's wife, my daughter, started go- getting um, contractions. And so she was on watch like high watch for about five days, yeah, a couple days. And then this past week, boom, she gave birth to a beautiful son. So congratulations, Quinn. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Yeah, his baby was born on Veterans Day. So what a day (laughs) to have a birthday. You know, my, my brother is born on Christmas Eve. I know some people who have kids that was born on Halloween and Holidays like that. And it's tough, man. It's tough to have your birthday on a day where, you know, like a holiday like Thanksgiving or Christmas, you know, people, it's it's not as special, you know, to me, this is what I think, you know, and no offense to all you birthday people out there who have birthdays on Christmas or New Year's or stuff. But this is my opinion. To me, it's it's not. It's not that it's not as special, but it doesn't feel as special because there's so much other things happening. And I just know this because like my brother on Christmas Eve. You know, that was the night where we all would, you know, sing carols when I was a kid, sing Christmas carols and open a present and all that. And in the mix of all that, we got to squeeze in. Oh, yeah, let's sing happy birthday to to my brother. You know, so, <laughs> you know, it, it was it was still special. But I, I, I had the feeling that at times that, you know, we was just kind of squeezing it in there. So um, but to all you people out there who have birthdays on holidays, hey, it's even it, it's probably even better for you. You get double presents. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I don't know about Veterans Day, though. Veterans Day? Uh, you get presents? Yeah, but it's not as bad as, like, being born on Christmas. To me. I'd rather be born on Veterans Day or Memorial Day. Oh, yeah. You, you know, holiday-wise? Because even Easter. I was saying, he's not going to get double presents. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. It's just all those guys born on Christmas and, you know. <laughs> to me, the worst would be New Year's, man. You know? Because everyone's trying to celebrate the end of that day. And it's like, dude, it's my birthday, man. <laughs> it's just begun. <laughs> yeah, so we kind of went dark because of all those reasons. And I hope it's a good enough reason for you people out there. Although I've been noticing that you've been enjoying our past episodes. So for those of you who, you know, this is your first time listening to us. Um, this is episode 20, Loud from Maui. You might want to go back to episode one and maybe try and catch up. You know, listen to the other episodes. And of course, what, guys? Like and subscribe. Right, right, Clint? Oh, yeah. Comment. Comment. Yes, yes, <laughs> comment. Don't be afraid to comment. We don't mind. And, and besides, if it's a bad comment, I'll just let Quinn read it. So, <laughs> yeah, but I did, I did miss you guys. I did miss talking on this podcast. And so I'm glad we're back. For episode 20. Hey, you know what? I wanted to do some corrections, of course, for the last episode, 19. Um, first of all, I'd like to apologize for that episode. I, you know, I, I kind of pulled it out of my ass. It was one of those moments where we, we, we recorded the entire episode and then it got erased. And then so I had to do it all over again. And so I apologize for being lackluster. And... Also, I, I'm apologizing for uh, making some mistakes, which I always do. I told you guys I'm going to make mistakes. And so here I go. Here I, I'm correcting those mistakes. First of, our, uh, first, of our, <laughs> first of all, it's not Zubair. Um, Habib's uh, cousin that got hit by Connor, I, I called him Zubair. It's not. Uh, oh, it's Zubair. It's not Kuber. <laughs> I called him Kuber, and it's not. It's, uh, it's Zubair. So... My bad. My bad on that one. 
And the actor for the movie Split that I was telling you guys to go and watch because that way when、um, Glass comes out, we'd all be on the same page. That's that M. Night Shyamalan series.、Um, the name of that actor from Split is James McEvoy. I, I didn't even say his name, I just said how good of an actor he was. He also played the young、uh, Professor X on X Men, right? So, yeah, he's, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. So, That's, a, that's it for the apologies. Not bad, not too bad, but you know, I know that I was kind of flustered to episode 19. I wasn't as relaxed as, as I am now. So forgive me, people. On with the show. I got a good show for you guys because I have an interesting topic here that I know you guys are going to want to talk about. It concerns our safety on our roads. You know me with, with being. Uh, safe on the highways and knowing what lane to be in when you're driving like an idiot, driving slow, you know, getting the right lane. A lot of people, they've been complaining about that lately, and it's just funny because I, that's my, my number one complaint. I can't stand that. But on a more serious note, people, we gotta, we gotta do something about trucks with balls. And I'm not talking about power. I'm talking about real balls hanging from the back of their bumper. Some cow nut looking balls with veins. They got pink ones. They got blue ones. They got chrome plated ones. They got brass ones. Balls hanging from trucks. Dude, I was behind a, a, a white Dodge Ram. Yes, hence the word Ram, a Dodge Ram. And hanging right behind. On that bumper was a pair of like bright pink balls with veins. And this guy hung it just low enough so that every time he hit a bump or, or he took a, a, a steep turn, those things would just start skipping off the road. <laughs> They're so distracting. I'm like, stop looking at those balls. Stop looking at those balls. But it looked like a pair of cowboy balls dangling behind that. You know, I'm. I, had a, I have a friend that drives around a blue Toyota, and lo and behold, he has a pair of what? Blue balls hanging from the back of that truck. Quinn, did you ever see those trucks before with balls hanging from the back? <laughs> you know, it'd be the days when they put a butthole on the tailgate. That's going to be like ultimate distraction. But the balls hanging from the back of a truck, that is distracting to me. You know, and it's like, stop staring at the ball. <laughs> and these are big ones. I wonder how much they cost. I don't know, man, but it's starting to get popular because a lot of people are starting to do it, especially country guys, I notice. <laughs> a lot of guys up country, I guess it's from hanging around with all those bulls, you know, riding bulls and stuff. They, they, just, they, they just start hanging those balls from their truck and it's like, yep, my truck's a bull, <laughs> unless it's a ram. But yeah, trucks, come on. Don't be hanging your balls from the truck, please. Dice in the mirror, that's distracting enough. But balls from the back of your truck, like I said, that'll be the day when they start putting a butthole on the tailgate. <laughs> Probably have those,、um, those, those full print tailgates. Oh, with a tail? <laughs> have a, like the... some, <laughs> some chick on the back or something. No, but these are real、I've、balls other, hanging from、I've、the truck. I saw one the other day with、um, this guy had like、um, two deers on top of his tailgate.、It's、oh, yeah. Like a picture of him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, see that I don't mind. That is all right. But when you got a pair of balls hanging from your truck, and you know, it has to be a truck. You can't have a pair of balls like that hanging on a car. You know what I mean? Like a Nissan Maxima. <laughs> Or like yours, an Ultima. Yeah? Imagine a big, a big pair of balls hanging off on the back of your, your Nissan Ultima. I might buy a pair for the van. Oh, even a van. <laughs> <laughs> even a van. You can't have balls hanging from a van. It's like. If, if you look at a, a cat or a rabbit, tell me which one you think is the male, which one is the female. It's hard because you can't see it. There's like no balls. You know? There's no balls in the heart, and the pecker's gone. Like, you know? I've had rabbits, and it's hard to tell which one's a male or a female because they don't have balls hanging down. Not like a dog, you know? Imagine a cat walking around with a pair of dog balls. <laughs> oh my God. So, like, you know, small cars, they're like cats or rabbits, you know? You don't, you don't see mice running around with big old balls hanging from the back, you know? So, like, those little, what are those,、um, those uh, Leafs or, you know, those, those cars, the Teslas? 
those electric cars, imagine those with a big pair of balls hanging from the back of the bumper. <laughs> no, but you know what? They hang on those cars, right? Those trolls, you know, those troll dolls with the hair. Or they hang like um, little beanie babies, you know, small little things like that, cute little toys, you know, dorky stuff like that. But I'd like to see a Nissan driving around with a friggin' pair of cow balls hanging from the back. Interesting topic, hey, guys? Let's get on this. Enough. Enough. <laughs> oh, it is funny, though. It is funny. Um, you know, speaking about having a pair of balls, um, some people out there, you, you know, you got to grow some, some guys out there. You got to grow some balls, man, and, and, and stop driving like an idiot. There's this one person driving up the highway. Now, granted, the speed limit's what, 45? I think it was 45. This guy was going like 38. It's like, step on it, dude. What's wrong with you? I mean, it was raining and the wind was blowing pretty hard, but grow a pair. That's the kind of guy that needs balls hanging from his truck. You know, the guy that's driving under the speed limit. Oh. Anyway, enough with trucks with balls. <laughs> so, Quinn, your new son, how is it? great man it's awesome yeah yeah it's frustrating at first you know oh i know i know I to, I to fly out to fly oahu out, man but hey kapiolani is to me the best oh, yeah, their they're treatment awesome. they're awesome uh i went out to kapiolani with my wife to what 20 22 years ago when she gave birth with the twins we had to go kapiolani she was bedridden for almost two months and kapiolani was there they were just on it, awesome, gave birth to my twins there. One of my twins had to stay a little bit longer, you know, in the incubator. But look at them now. Yep. And now one of them is a mother, and her son, full circle, went to Kapiolani. <laughs> and they did good, huh, Quinn? Oh, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I was pretty bummed out at first. But then after I got there, I kind of realized how fortunate we were. You know, we were there for like a couple of days only. Yeah. I was talking to some some moms. Oh, yeah. I've been there for like three um, months. A month. Oh, three months. Three months. Wow, she was telling me this one lady was there for 10 months. Oh. Her baby's 10 months old, can't even leave. Wow. So hard. Like That is. Makes you like, really uh, um, appreciate, appreciate what, what, what you got now. Yeah, man. for sure. Now it's just like, I'm all OCD, I'm sterilizing everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all. That's all. Usually, the first two, you're like that. You, you're very, you know, cautious, and you, you sterilize everything. And by the time you have three, four, and then like me, <laughs> number five, you're like, ah, whatever. <laughs> Go roll in the, Go roll in the dirt. <laughs> dirt is healthy for you. What do you build up your antibodies? Come on, kid. <laughs> yeah, you you start you start getting more uh, laxed about everything, yeah? relaxed, and not as. Well, experience, that's the, that's the key, man, in life is experience. Whatever you experience, you gain confidence. And when you get confidence, you just evolve. I mean, that's just natural. So, like, even raising kids, your first kid, normally you're very, you know, aware and, and, and conscious of everything they do. And, you know, it, actually you lose sleep because it drives you kind of crazy. Yeah. But by the time you're, like, the third one, man, you're just like, yeah, yeah, where's the kid? Where's the kid? <laughs> You don't freak out as much, you know. And you know what is funny is you get these thoughts as a parent about people trying to kidnap your kid. You know what I mean? Trying to, and they do. If you see those things on, like on YouTube and stuff or Facebook, people just walking up to kids in the cart and just grabbing them, trying to grab right, right in front of the mom. You know, and the mom has to try and beat them off and other people in the store attack the guy. Dude, I would destroy. If so, if I was, if I was witnessing someone do that or if, Someone thing was happening with my granddaughter. She was in my cart, and some dummy tried to pull her out of that cart, man. Oh, hell would break loose. Oh, what would you do, Quinn? Freaking. I, 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 you know. Driver, guys are getting killed with chip bags. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's closest. To I'll it. grab tuna cans and stick it in. I'll be hitting guys with tuna cans, man. That'd be tuna can brass knuckles. Oh, snap. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would attack. You know, they would have to call the cops on me because I'd, I'd probably kill the guy. <laughs> you try and steal my kid in front of me like that? I mean, just try and steal the kid, period. You sick son of a... Son of a bitch. <laughs> Like getting knots now, but I like I like <laughs> slams. Like, oh, you got you. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, but then as you get older, you realize that you know, yeah, you got to keep an eye on your kid, but you don't have to be as, you know, anal about it. You can be more relaxed. It's all good. The world is a pretty good place, and if you have a good community, then a good safe community, then you have a good safe house. That's what I believe. You know, and it does. But it starts from your home, so it, it works both ways, right? <clears throat> Whoa, excuse me. Sorry about that. Oh, that came from the depths, man. From the depths. This corona is coming up. Coming up. Yeah. Um, you know, I was looking at all this land all around us, and it's all, you know, because of the fires, like in California, God bless all those people. I think 26,000 people are out of homes now. Um, bad, 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 but it's all dry land, dry vegetation that, you know, cause they haven't had rain for so long, you know, it, it, it creates a problem. And then when it do, when it does rain, landslides and mudslides and, you know, because all the vegetation's burnt up and the, the land is all powdery and loose. And we have the same problems here when we have droughts, um, you know, our places, you know, a guy flicks a cigarette. You know, something stupid, Nimrod does something dumb like that and, you know, place it goes up in flames. Or it could be like an electrical box, something, you know, powered out or whatever and, and sparked and, and you know, cause a fire. The scary thing is how fast a fire can move. Like, you don't realize how fast, you know, a fire burns and just can move with the wind. If the wind is blowing like 60 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, that fire is moving as fast as probably how fast that wind blows, you know? And they, they say that the California fire was burning up like something like 80 football fields worth, worth every minute or every, like, something like that, like 80 football fields worth. Wow, that's crazy. Let me look it up. Yeah, look it up, man. It was bad. And the reason I'm talking about this is because we just went through, on, on our island, Maui, here, right before the hurricane, just a couple of months ago, two months ago, a bad fire in Lahaina, which um, affected a bunch of people, uh, families, and homes out there. And so, you know, we from Maui over here, we, can, we know exactly what California is going through right now, um, what other places went through. Um, the East Coast got that hurricanes, and we've got hurricanes. And, you know, so the world is not as, you know, big and far off as you think. Everything's happening the same everywhere. And a lot of people are saying conspiracy, you know. With this? Yeah, the government. <laughs> they had beams, laser beams. It was lighting cars on fire and shit. <laughs> uh, just conspiracy theories, right? That's crazy. But, hey, um, and so, yeah. So, I, you know, I was just driving up the highway. The reason I'm talking about this is because I was driving up the highway and I'm looking at all the HCNS land that is not being used for sugarcane anymore. And um, it's starting to get grown in, like, and it's, and now, you know, it's it's rainy season now, so a lot of stuff is going to start growing, weeds, grass. And then if we do go into a dry season, all that stuff is going to dry up and become fire hazard. So, you know, I really hope that they're planning on growing more stuff out there. You know, they're, they're, I know they were asking people, you know, what should they grow now? People were saying coffee. People were saying sugar beets. Some people were saying, you know, hemp. I agree with that. They should, they should grow cannabis and hemp. Why not? You know, it's getting legal everywhere. And weren't we just doing our research and we found out that there's a Maui, Maui um, uh, what do you call that, when they distribute marijuana? Um, they got a Maui one, right? That is number one, right? What's the name of that place? Where is that? The Maui, the one they distribute weed. Um dispensary where down in Wailea yeah down in Wailea remember and then the, you said that they're like the number one uh, right now they're voted number one wow, I don't even know what is yeah it? you even told me his name um, shoot I forget the name of that place anyway they have those places so why not you know why not grow hemp hemp is a product that doesn't even have any smoking agents to it it's just a it's a material from marijuana that you can use 
and and it's stronger than regular rope. You can use it like plastics. You know, it's it's biodegradable, safe for our, our environment. So why not? Why not start looking into these other crops? I tell you what they better not be doing. They better not be subdividing and planning on development because that's just going to kill us. Our road structures here is not built for a million people population. And it seems like we're headed that way because, man, the traffic is amazing, huh? Just trying to drive around in the morning. We have a lot of two-lane roads here, guys. For all you people out there that don't know, we're very country-oriented right now, this island. But um, trying to move into a city-type state, I mean, unless they'd start re redeveloping all our highway structures and all that, it's going to be really hard, really hard. I mean, we already have enough traffic. We don't need more congestion. What we need is um, more planning towards like crops and stuff. You know, start getting, we don't have sugarcane anymore. Let's get another crop in there. Let's start using up this land. Let's start, start doing something, yeah. right? Let's start doing something. And yeah, I think with the, with the new people in offices now, hopefully they can start bringing up a plan to get that moving. And like I said, no development. Come on, you know, a lot of these developers, oh, fuck, you know, it pisses me off. A lot of the, these developers, they come over here with their big old ideas, these grand schemes, and you know what? They don't live here. They fly back to their homes. They fly back to the mainland where they live and leaving us with the problems, you know, with the congestion, with the, the lack of, 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 of proper road structures so that we can deal with this, this morning commutes that is turning, turning out to be very irritating and crazy now. You know, and we're getting more accidents because there's more cars on the road and our roads ain't ready for it. And so remember I was telling you guys that we, we had a three lane highway for years until finally they put one more lane. <laughs> three lane highway. I remember for years they were coning off the lanes every morning, every evening, uh, every morning. Yeah, every evening, every morning, every evening. They put cones out. They're paying guys to go put cones out to, to give a two lane side on the one, one lane side. You know, remember when they're doing that? Yeah. Oh. It's crazy. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, ATNS. Uh, you know, I don't know how you guys are dealing with the, with the land that's not being used right now, but there should be a crop that should be coming up, right? Right? And then maybe ATNS can stand for um, Hawaiian Cannabis and Smoke. <laughs> Instead of uh, Howley's Come and Steal. Oh! na na na. Oh, man. You know, we were just, uh, just enjoying our babies. I got the, I got the luck, uh, the luckiest, I'm the luckiest grandpa because I, I, I have the luck of, of having my baby with me, my granddaughter, for the past week because uh, Quinn guy's, had to go Oahu, so I was the lucky grandfather who had to cruise at the granddaughter, and had to take her out cruising at the at the parks and and go run around and 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 she is so beautiful. I loved it. And like I said, I was the luckiest grandpa because I got to do that, and um, I appreciated that, even though the circumstances was stressful, you know. But now that you guys are back with the baby, yeah, Quinn, it's a lot. More at ease, uh, oh, yeah. a lot more at ease, and but I do appreciate having my granddaughter this past week, just me and her, and I got to call in sick, you know, <laughs> I got to go with her to Kalamaru and let her go jump on the those uh those sea creature, you know, that little park in the in the mall, and she's jumping on the turtles, and at first she was afraid, she like she was real cautious, she's walking around, and then she saw this one boy, and then he's like two years old, and um he was just jumping all over everything and he would crawl to the top and he was like, you know, you know, watch, watch, watch. And he'd jump from the top. I'm like, oh my, I was going to have a heart attack. I was like, and the mom's like, oh yeah, he does that all the time. I'm like, holy shit, he's crazy. So <laughs> my granddaughter seeing this, I guess, you know, she's uh she likes to follow along. So she starts 
like trying to crawl up to the top. I'm like, wow, she's trying to go. Then she goes to jump. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, you're not that skilled yet, little one. Oh, man, but she loved it. And, you know, I forgot how exhausting it is to watch a, a, a one-year-old, you know, or what, she's 14 months, run around, touch everything, like from here to there to this. What's that? What's this? Oh, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, oh, my gosh, put that down. Go over here. Oh, my gosh, you know, I'm trying to run after her and... It was, at the end of the day, I was so exhausted. Like, when she went for her nap, I, I went down too, man. Oh, but, yeah, reliving my, my youth as a yeah. father, you know, when I was young. All worth it. That's All worth it. it. But, you know, I think, when I was younger, I never got tired like that. Because I, I was in my 20s when I started having my kids, yeah, like you. So, now that I'm in my, like, mid-40s, to have a kid now, crazy. And I know people classmates of mine and holla you guys out there i love you but you crazy that have kids right now two years old five years old <laughs> in their mid-40s hey props to you guys man i bet you guys are on a clean keto diet yeah trying to get take care of your health so you can have enough energy to just last because <laughs> i forgot how hard it was you know, like I said, I was in my 20s when I had my kids. So when a lot of people was out clubbing, I was rocking babies to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel now. But, you know, it's worth it because you don't want to be having little babies at 40. You know, and a lot of those, a lot of people, especially in my generation right now, who um, were career opportunists, you know, who who went for the career and you know, props up to you, good job, and now they're in a good position in their life financially, and they got good jobs and stuff, but now having a kid right now, man, ah, that just takes a extra special person. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't be able to do it, man. And, you know, once my, my, my youngest child turned, what, 14? Now he's 15? You know, once he started turning that teen age, and now he's in high school... I'm I'm starting to I'm starting to slowly feel the freedom, you know what I mean. With the exception of my grand my grandchildren now, which I don't mind, but but I am starting to feel that freedom again. Like I can go out now, you know. My wife's like, "What do you want to do?" I said, "I don't. Let's go out to eat." Yeah, you know, we'll just go. You know, we don't have to pack up no kids, no vans. Yeah, that van is you're gonna love that van. Well, is vans, I tell you what, vans for all you family people out there, especially you new fathers, get rid of that Mustang, get rid of that Impala. I had to, you know what I mean? Put down the Chevy and pick up the van because the van keys, put down the Chevy keys and pick up the van keys because when you don't have to bend over to stick your kid in a car seat, <laughs> right? The van, you just go right there, uh, whoop. Right inside. And you got the Kia, right? The, the two-sided, the kind of yeah, two doors. See, I only had one, one side. Only one door would slide open. So yours, you got two sides. You can go one side, go the other side. <laughs> Amazing. Nice and fast, huh? Yeah. Hey, did you ever find out that information um, that you was looking at? Uh, yeah. So I couldn't find out fast it was burning a fire, but... Yeah. Yeah, I heard it was like 80 football fields, like a minute. Or something crazy like that. It's crazy though, but like yeah, seventy nine reported dead, thirteen hundred people missing. Oh my gosh! Uh, like they they don't know where they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, wait, and fire. You know, you burn up, pow. That's but, it. Yeah, four hundred square miles. I guess four hundred square miles. Uh, everyone. Four hundred miles. If you, I I don't know if it's on Facebook. I think it's on Facebook. I saw this one where this woman was trying to drive out. I guess she was trying to rescue her horses or something. She must have been in a trailer and she's driving out. Oh my God. She started screaming. She thought she wasn't going to make She lived, by the way. She made it. But she was driving through fire, like fire on the road, burning. Then she goes through a tunnel and you can hear her going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, please, please help me, help me. At the end of the tunnel, she's going through the tunnel, all smoke. Going through the tunnel, going through the tunnel. As soon as she's reaching the end, you just see orange. More fire. She come out of the tunnel. Fire. Oh. And she's driving through fire. And at one point, there was so much fire on the road, she, her, she put on her windshield wipers because it had ash coming all over. And she's, she was crying at the driver's seat. She was crying, just saying, please, please, help me get... She, oh, man, it's so intense. 
so intense. But, you know, they say, you know, that these are natural events. But because we're developing so much everywhere, we're not used to that. You know, forest fires. That's a, that's a natural event for forest fires to happen. What's not natural is when having embers fly in the sky and land on the roof of your house where you have tar and you have, some of them have wood, you know, cedar shingles. They have tar with cedar, you know, that kind of stuff. You know how fast a roof catches fire? They said people's roofs are catching fire because embers are floating in the sky falling on the roof and, and igniting the, the tar, heating up the tar, and the tar would burn, and then the roof would catch fire. So stuff like that, you know. Um, just the buses, you saw that? The cars and the buses and everything on the side of the road. No, I haven't. I haven't oh, man, lost. buses gutted, like just white, all ashed. Entire buses, uh, cars abandoned. <laughs> yeah, horrible. No, just looking online right now, like... This whole subdivision just yeah all ash. You see yeah where the houses were yeah yeah crazy. I know, sad. Well, uh, that's when you gotta stay tight with your community, and everyone has to help each other out. Like the like the people in Lahaina, you know, the community stepped up and helped. They're helping each other. You know, getting water, getting food, and and that's what you need you need good people in your community to hold everyone together because that's how we'll survive we're on an island here so what people got to realize that move here from the mainland and stuff that don't know this is that you're in an island and we all need each other because the person that you might stick finger at or or swear at on the road for cutting you off might be that same doctor or nurse that's saving your life in the er because you got into an accident you know and what are you going to say when you look up at the person and it's the person that you spit on his car? Guilty! Or, you know, <laughs> or swearing at someone. And like, what? 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 You, what? You F? You know? And then, you know, you open your mouth because you have a cavity and the dentist ready to pull a tooth out. You look and it's that guy that you're swearing at, you know, on the road. It's like, shame! Shame! So that's what, you know, that's what it's all about. Anyway, moving on. How, how's things over there? What you looking at, Quinn? What is that? What is that? Huh? I'm just trying to make some, make a new design for us and stuff. Oh, okay. I just saw the islands, and so I thought you was looking up like our weather, because according to our weather, it's gonna be raining like a lot in the next couple of days. So we might be looking at a rainy, rainy Thanksgiving. Hopefully not, but according to the weather, it, it, the next two weeks is gonna be pretty wet. So. Anyway, oh, excuse me. Oh, too much beer. I'm burping, man. Jeez, I can't hold it down. Sorry, people. Sorry to be so rude. Maybe I'm too relaxed this one, huh? <laughs> episode 20. Ho, oh, oh, hey, we're rolling up on episode 21. Dude, you know what episode 21 means, right? Drinking age. We're going to be pounding some beers for that one, dude. I hope you're ready. That's, a, that's episode 21, bro. That's drinking age, that. We got a pot, eh? 21. So that's pretty much what? 21, 20, 20, 21 weeks we've been doing this. So, hey, congratulations, Quinn. Not bad. Episode Not bad. 20. We're doing pretty good. Sorry we went dark for the past couple of weeks, but like I said, we have a good excuse. So I hope you guys excuse us. Anyway, moving on. Um, UFC information. I got to get this out to you guys before I um, end this. Yeah, DJ My Mighty Mouse. And he's trading spots with Ben Askren. For those of you who don't know out there, the, the great Demetrius Johnson, DJ Mighty Mouse, is moving over to 1FC. And Ben Askren is moving over to UFC from 1FC. So they're kind of doing like a trade there. You got two undefeated fighters. Well, I'm sorry. DJ just lost to um, Cejudo, but... It's all good. So he's, he's going over to 1FC. Ben Askren's moving over to UFC. First fight for Ben Askren is Robbie Lawler. Whoa. Animal. Animal fight. Ben Askren is undefeated. He's uh, undefeated and he's a champion of 1FC. He's a wrestler. He's actually Tyron Woodley's um, training partner and good friend. So what's funny is you'll see Ben, he, he, he's... Um, Calling out all the all the 
fighters from UFC except for Tyron Woodley. Um, and, and that's because they're friends. But he, he puts it to, to Darren Till. He calls out Covington. He calls out everybody that thinks they can tap. You know what I'm saying? And good luck, man, because Ben is a big Khabib, basically. And, and, and this is how they're comparing him to. They're saying, Ben Askren, if you want to compare him to Khabib, would be like Khabib's older brother. <laughs> That's how good he is. And once he grabs you, I, I saw a couple of his fights. Once he grabs a guy, it's like the guy can't get away. Like they can't get away. And he drags him down and drowns him and just beats the crap out of him. <laughs> his last two fights, he didn't get hit once. And these are against animal fighters. Animal. So... Here he comes, UFC, and he's taking on the whole division. Um, there was rumor that Cerrone was supposed to fight Cowboy, but I guess now Dana's shooting that rumor down. Too bad, because Cowboy Cerrone just did the meanest arm bar to Mike Platinum Perry, breaking his arm. And I'm not talking about the bones. He didn't break the bones. According to Perry, he didn't snap his bones, but he did um stretch out his ligaments and tear his tendons in his elbow. Mm. And he said it popped and grinded like six times before he tapped. But Donald had that arm tight, flipped over on his stomach. Crazy fight. Crazy, crazy fight. Congratulations. Yair Rodriguez versus the Korean zombie. Oh, damn. I was going for the zombie. Um, both of them hasn't been fighting for a while. They both have stacked records against stacked fighters. They're top of the, the game. And Zombie was winning. And remember, Korean Zombie is the first one to pull off the twister. And he, he, was, um, he was doing good in his fighting. Then he had to leave for the military because in Korea, they have to join the military. And he was in the military for the past couple, few, couple years, I think four years, and now he's back. And he did awesome against... Uh, Yair Rodriguez and he was winning he was winning winning and spoiler alert to all you people out there who don't know yet which you should because this is old but Yair caught him with an elbow Korean zombie swung at him with a left and a right Yair went he ducked under both one two and when he ducked under the right hand I believe he, he, he went under and he brought his elbow up right under Korean um, zombie's chin and it was like an under elbow, like from underneath. Bam! Knocked Korean zombie clean out. Get this, everybody. One second before the end of the fight. No, that was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Everybody was... A lot of people who was watching the fight was, was, was thinking, ah, oh, Korean won. The Korean won. And a lot of people blinked. A lot of people <laughs> turned away to grab their drink and take a drink off their beer. And as soon as they turned away... Bam! He just got knocked out. What? <laughs> yeah, that How many people missed the knockout because they turned away for that last second? And, and Korean zombie got flatlined. And he couldn't get up. Like, he was out. And then the crazy thing is, Yair broke his foot, I think. Really? Or, he, or his shin. So he couldn't walk out of the cage either. He had a hard time walking out. They fought like, like two... Soldiers. Oh, that was fight of the year. Oh though. man, they said that's knockout of the of the year, maybe even knockout of the century. Wow, uh, like because that is just amazing. I did the same thing. I I turned around. I was like, ah, this is over. This is over. All right, there. He's like, wow. Corey was watching. Rah. I was like, what? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I had to go YouTube after. <laughs> and even that, they don't show them, man. They just show pictures. You're like, no, I like to see the fight. I like to see the, the fight. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, I wonder what, like, some capoeira move or something. Yeah, well, it, he ducked under it. I seen him duck under, duck under. And when he, he went under the right side, I believe, he brought his elbow straight up into his chin. It's weird. Weird. He said throw, that he yeah. practiced that, that. No, it looks like he Like, he did. practiced that. Yeah. And he tried it earlier. I, 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 rem I remember seeing that he tried it in the, uh, the earlier rounds. He tried to duck underneath and he tried to bring the elbow up, but he missed him like twice, I think. And I was thinking, I remember, I'm like, wow, I wonder if, he, if he's doing that on purpose. Looked like he almost got him with that one. And then that last round, last second, pop, caught him right on the button. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, 1FC, um, we have a few Maui fighters that's headed out there, ready to fight in the 1FC uh, promotion so right on 
I can't wait. That's a good promotion to get involved in. And, um, and good future, man, because they got a lot of good fighters going out there. Eddie Alvarez, um, that guy Sage Northcutt is going out there. A couple of female fighters. So, yeah, you know, they're, they're, 1FC is moving up. Right on. Um, UFC is getting rid of the 125-pound division. And I think Cejudo versus TJ Dillashaw, which is going to be a banger, is going to be the last, I think. And I think they want to try and close it out. So if TJ Dillashaw wins, then yes, definitely that 125-pound division is done. And TJ is going to walk away with two belts. But if he loses, who knows, you know, are they still going to get rid of it? Yeah, it sounds like they are, but maybe Cejudo should go up to 135 pound if he wins and, and try and take away that, that belt too then. Yeah, because I, I know he can. Cejudo's a good wrestler. A lot of good wrestlers and jiu-jitsu guys is coming into the scene. Oh, yeah, and also Cron Gracie, son of Hickson Gracie, is probably signing up with the UFC now. Right now, he's currently 4-0. and He's 4-0, and and the last one he just beat was Kawajiri, who is UFC material. So he's ready. He's ready. So watch out, everybody. Be, be ready for that one. Cron Gracie. Hey, everybody, you know what? We're moving up on 41 minutes already. How time flies when you're having fun, and I was having fun. But you know what? I think we got we to gotta put a stop to this right now. We've been in the dark so long that when we're coming out, we, like, celebrate that. We have a new baby. Thanksgiving is rolling around. Hey, everybody, happy Thanksgiving. Be very, 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 very grateful for what you have and who you're with. Because, you know, tomorrow isn't given to everybody. You know, it's not promised to everyone. So live for now and appreciate everything you have. That's my Thanksgiving thought. Just in case we go black next week. <laughs> yeah, Quinn? Nah, no ways. Nah, we'll have episode 21. And we're going to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, age 21, legal. Our podcast is going to be legal. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you can get us on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on iTunes. What else, Quinn? What else? Um, I put us up on Stitcher. Stitcher? See, now I forget what else we got to put. Oh, Amazon. Stitcher. We got to do Amazon. Oh, yeah, Audible, yep, yep. And when you do, please like and subscribe. And that way we can keep giving you guys more episodes like this and feel appreciated. Right, Quinn? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all good. It's all good. Hey, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. And a hui ho. This is Ed and Quinn. Coming to you loud from my way. Shoots, lad at. <laughs>